know, you messed it up. <laughs> You're stupid. And today's Daily Dose of Stupid once again comes to us courtesy of Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. So for those of you who are unaware, several members of the Democrat Party, and including the fresh faces, the new freshman class of Democrats, which are responsible for many of the daily doses of stupid, and, and something I'm very grateful for, by the way. AOC by herself would be a treasure, but you've also got people like Rashida Tlaib and Ilhan Omar. But a lot of those people went down to the border to observe what actually goes on inside these facilities that they're talking about, which is a good thing. Now, what I do find ironic about this is that uh, she's been invited by several different people to several different facilities to see what the Holocaust was really like, because as you may know, AOC has gotten really popular the past couple weeks, uh, whether you consider it famous or infamous, I'll let you decide, for referring to the holding facilities for illegal immigrants as concentration camps. Now, if you look at the dictionary definition of a concentration camp, where it talks about specifically holding political prisoners, uh, typically where things like torture and inhumane activities are going on, the facilities at the border do not meet any of those qualifications. But nonetheless, this is something that originally she seemed to kind of back off of, and then after she saw that uh, she was having to back off on it, wound up doubling down on it. Because originally she tried to back off a little bit and said, well, I didn't mean Nazi concentration camps. I meant the concentration camps that were happening in America when Japanese people were interned in World War II. Which, granted, is a concentration camp that wasn't nearly as bad as what happened in the Holocaust. But that's still not an apt comparison because those were American citizens we're talking about illegal immigrants, two completely different things. In one case, you had Japanese Americans that their only crime was happening to be Japanese. And in the other case, you have people that were caught illegally crossing a border, which is a crime in the United States of America. They're being detained just like any other prisoner that breaks a crime. And they're also non-citizens. So there's really not an apt comparison there, but even so, what AOC did afterward was actually double down and, and basically make comparisons once again to the Holocaust. And this led to uh, a member of actually Poland's government inviting her to come and actually tour some of the concentration camps to see what a concentration camp is actually like. Uh, there were members of the, I can't remember the name of it, but the like the Jewish Society of America or something like that, the Jewish... Jewish Historical Society of America, I think, that invited her to tour some facilities and, and look at some of the museums to see what the, the Holocaust was actually like, because if she thinks that these facilities are comparable to the Holocaust, then she's absolutely out of her mind, and we pretty much already determined that she was. But nonetheless, this is something that multiple people, multiple people that know a lot about the Holocaust and, and even Holocaust survivors have tried to instruct her that this is not the right way to do it. This is nothing like the Holocaust and you're making a completely unrealistic comparison. She decided not to listen to any of those guys or to accept any of their offers to educate herself on what was actually going on in the Holocaust and instead decided to go down with a bunch of Democrats to the, the border facilities, which is fine. I'm glad that she and the other Democrats decided to take a trip down there. I actually do appreciate that if if they're going to criticize it, then they need to actually see what it's really like. I think that that is a, you know, an appropriate response to what is going on here. So, you know, I at least give them kudos for that even if I don't necessarily give them kudos for anything else. But AOC, you could tell, went into this with a preconceived notion, basically already having her mind made up of what her impression was going to be long before there was a decision that was going to be made on. She had this decision in her mind made up long before she actually got down and saw what was going on herself. And, and we had sort of a running commentary with AOC while she was going on. Before we get into what she actually said. I do believe that context matters. While I don't believe that it is okay to use an ad hominem attack and say, because this person is X, or because this person is who they are, then I'm just not going to pay attention to them because I don't like them. 
that's not logic. That's actually a logical fallacy known as the ad hominem fallacy. So I don't want to engage in that. But I do think the context of the situation is important. So let's take a look at that for a second. First of all, in the situation that I just described, that was an example of it. AOC is the kind of person who has known to double down even when the facts are not on her side. She has also been shown to be a person that refuses to admit when she's wrong, even when the facts, again, are against her, even when the data shows that she's completely wrong, even when people like PolitiFact and Snopes, hardly right-leaning fact-checkers, or the Washington Post fact-checker and say, nope, she's completely wrong, refuses to say that she's wrong. Even when people on the left say, nope, not even close, she's completely wrong, the facts are not on her side, she still refuses to say, sorry guys, got, I messed up on that one. I cannot think of a single time where she actually ever admitted that she was wrong. On anything. No matter how many boneheaded, stupid, or completely false statements that she makes, she never admits that she was wrong. And another thing that's important to consider too she is someone that believes that facts do not matter as long as you're on the right side or you're morally right. And this is not conjecture or my opinion. These are things that she herself has tweeted or talked about in the public sphere. You remember that she said that I think a lot of people are, are fact-checking me and, and making fun of me or whatever and saying that I'm not factually accurate, but that doesn't matter as long as I'm morally right. So essentially what she was saying there and I think that she really believes this. I don't. I think that it wasn't a flub. I think she was being sincere. That as long as I'm on the right side, whether or not my facts are right don't really matter. And so she's someone that actually believes that it doesn't matter even if you lie or your facts are completely wrong as long as you're on the right side. And in her mind, that's her side, of course. But nonetheless, this is something that she really believes. And so because of that, and also because of this, I want you to think about this when you're thinking about the context, too. This is a person that has a vested interest in being right. In other words, she has been preaching from, from the rooftops, screaming from the street corners for weeks now that the conditions at the border are horrible, that the border patrol agents are basically Nazis, that this is the same thing as concentration camps, that there's no difference, has doubled down on this stance multiple times. And if she goes down there, and if she sees anything other than, oh, oh my gosh, it's a concentration camp, well, then she has to admit that she's wrong, and that looks very bad for her, a politician, to have to do. And so I just want you to keep in mind that she also has a very clear vested interest in making herself look good, being a politician, in being right, because it would be very embarrassing and politically difficult for her to admit that she was wrong. Now, frankly, I would gain a lot of respect for her personally if she went down there and said, you know what, it wasn't nearly as bad as I thought it was going to be. Here's some things that I might be critical of, but it really wasn't a concentration camp. Now, don't get me wrong. I wouldn't think that that would mean that automatically Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez is somebody that I would vote for, not that I'm in her district anyway, but nonetheless, I would at least say, okay, on that one issue, yeah, she showed some honesty, and I admire her integrity, at least in that one stance, but that's not what happened. And so just keep in mind that when you're hearing what she's saying, that this woman has a vested interest in being right and the conditions being exactly what she said that they were for her political career to continue. So because of that, I think everything that she says should be taken at least with a grain of salt on this issue. First of all, she claimed that Border Patrol denied one woman water and forced her to drink from a toilet. Now, let's remember where she is. She's at a holding facility for criminals. Do you think that the criminal might have a motive to make up stories or say things that weren't necessarily true? I mean, because we know that never happens, right? Like in a normal prison, one that doesn't necessarily have illegal immigrants in it, one that's just for federal or state crimes, and, and for example, a state penitentiary, that there would be no motive whatsoever for criminals to say that the guards are mistreating them or the conditions are less than ideal. Now, don't take me wrong, 
there's even some significant problems with the prisons here in Alabama. So this is not an idea that's foreign to me. And I'm not saying that just because a prison a prisoner says that the conditions aren't ideal, that that means that, oh, they're lying about it and, and we should just disregard it. I'm saying just remember and calculate into your thought process and your opinions about what's going on here. Let that factor in that there is a motive for this person to lie to you. Doesn't mean they're lying. But it means that you shouldn't just take whatever they're saying at face value. There should be a little bit of investigation that goes on with that. That's all I'm saying. So keep that in mind. And another thing, remember too that we have found evidence on multiple occasions. We've seen pamphlets that were specifically put together and written in Spanish for illegal immigrants to know how to work the border control system, how to get in, how to seek asylum, what to say, what not to say, basically coaching them on how to get into this country if they don't have legal status or they don't have papers to do so. We have also seen that in the caravans, you remember in that undercover video that uh, was it uh, Amy uh, Army, Amy Hammer? Uh, that he did with the migrant caravan, that there were people there with the organization that were actually coaching people on how to get into the border, how to get past it, and how to talk to border control agents and how to say certain things to be able to get in. So basically coaching them on how to game the system and how to get into the country illegally. So we know that that's going on, and we know that there's a concerted effort there. Are we really supposed to believe that it's not even possible or it shouldn't at least be a factor to be considered that these people might have been told, okay, if you ever see anybody come by or inspect, you, you want to make sure that you tell them that you're being mistreated. Especially when you consider that AOC has been on the forefront of this and it's not impossible that they have been hearing what she and other Democrats in Congress have been saying. Especially when you factor in that there is a concerted effort within this country to get as many illegals in as possible, coming specifically from the Democrats. You don't think there's at least a chance that this woman had been coached at some point before entering the country, or maybe even after, and knew who AOC and the other Democrats were, or that there wasn't buzz going around the prison? Again, there's just so many factors that make this story less than plausible. But even if you disregard that, turns out we have evidence that it still wasn't true. Because according to the Border Patrol agent that was in question here, because he heard this story that AOC gave and he, he thinks he knows what she's talking about, the way that these things are built inside the cells, it's not dissimilar to a prison. Your toilets... And your sinks are a single unit. So you got your toilet bowl there at the bottom. You have your sink up top. They're basically all integrated into one machine. Now, they're not using the same water because out of the sink, and they even have labels above the sink that instruct you, okay, this is the sink, this is the toilet, and so they have them in English and Spanish. I've seen pictures of them. So they're all basically one unit mounted to the wall, and you have the place where you, you use the toilet, the place where you use the sink. And he said that one female immigrant, uh, illegal immigrant, came in and didn't understand or didn't know how to use the sink, and because of that started drinking out of the toilet. But they didn't make her do that, and then they did explain to her after seeing this happen that that's not what you're supposed to be doing that here's where you get a drink of water, that's where you do something else. And so this Border Patrol agent actually said, well, yes, that happened, but we didn't force her to do that. She didn't know how to use the sink, and we didn't know that. And then she, you know, proceeded to drink out of the toilet, and we explained to her, no, 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 that's not, not what you do. And so apparently this story does have a small kernel of truth to it, but it wasn't that the Border Patrol agents were denying her water and making her drink out of the sink. In fact, AOC's claim that they were denying her water is impossible. Because if there was water in the toilet, and the sink is attached to the toilet, and it, the machine was operational, then they couldn't have denied her water, even if they wanted to. 
because there's a sink in the cell with her. And so the claims that AOC is bringing out there just really doesn't make any sense. If the uh, if the thing was a single unit and the woman just got confused on it, that's not the same thing as a border patrol agent making her drink out of a toilet. That's a completely different thing. Ooh, my mic's there. Still getting used to the new studio. <laughs> but another thing that I would like to point out is that she said that she felt unsafe. That when she was around the the CBP, the the Civil Border Patrol agents that were there running the facility, that she felt very unsafe and that the environment was unsafe for her. Now, granted, I wouldn't put it past AOC, being the little snowflake that she is, to feel unsafe in pretty much any environment. So I'm not saying that she legitimately did not feel unsafe, but I'm saying, was that feeling valid or not? Now think about this. It's not just AOC, it's a group of Democrats going down to tour this facility all together in broad daylight. These are Congress people, and she's saying that she felt unsafe. What did she think was going to happen? Even if you believe that the Civil Border Patrol really are bad guys and they really are out to hurt people and they really hate Democrats, did she really think that the Border Patrol officers were, what, going to attack her and other congressmen with witnesses around in broad daylight and nobody would find out? Did she really think that was going to happen? Did she really believe that they, she was in an unsafe environment? I mean, typically, when you're going through a prison, the only thing that makes you feel unsafe are the inmates. The only ones that make you feel unsafe are the people that are there because they committed crimes. You feel safer around the guards. And so maybe AOC legitimately did feel unsafe, but she had no reason to. And that's the point that I'm trying to bring up. The idea that a Border Patrol agent, an actual law enforcement officer of the United States of America, was going to attack someone who is essentially his boss and other Democrats in a crowd, in the open, where there were witnesses, and he would think, oh, I'm totally going to get away with that. No, if AOC actually thought that was going to happen, she's even dumber than I thought she was. And that's impressive, because I already think she's pretty dumb. But I guess AOC says, I guess AOC really does feel unsafe in this thing. But I want you to think about the overall premise and sort of take this back and, and look at it from an aerial view here. The central claim that AOC is making doesn't make any sense. That these facilities are horrible and there's massive human rights violations going on and that these things are essentially concentration camps. You ever seen Auschwitz? You ever seen any of these concentration camps that were actually made by the Nazis? Or even, to use uh, the thing that AOC kind of tried to backtrack on, or the facilities that were being used in America against Japanese Americans. I want you to think about this. They had walls and fences, but not to keep people out, to keep the people in. You'll notice that the guard stations were not pointed outward, they were pointed inward. They were trying to make sure Jews did not escape from that facility. It wasn't as though those trains that led to the death camps that they were loaded to the brim because there were so many people that wanted to go there. It was the opposite. And so this assertion that, oh, there's all these illegal immigrants that are trying so hard to get to America, and when they get here, they're met with these horrible conditions where it's, it's like a, a concentration camp in Nazi Germany, you're absolutely out of your mind. The idea that there are people busting the doors down and crossing the border and risking their lives to get to a facility where they believe that they could be killed because of how bad the conditions are, give me a break. You've got to be outside your mind. And this is a problem that has been going on since the 1980s. You don't think at some point word would have gotten out that the conditions are a little less than ideal? You don't think at some point word would have gotten out... You know what's going on in those concentration camps. You know what's going on in those facilities once you cross the border. I'm telling you, man, it's just not worth it. The idea that there are illegal immigrants that are fighting each other and willing to pay basically their entire life savings just to get to America illegally, and that they're going to be met with being put in a concentration camp is patently absurd. 
there's absolutely no logical way you can reach that conclusion. The entire premise of her argument is way off base and doesn't make any sense. Nonetheless, even considering everything that we've just said and that I've just talked about, nonetheless, I still want this taken seriously. Now, I've just given you a long list of reasons why what AOC is saying ought not be believed. And I've just given you a long list of reasons why she has a vested interest in making sure that this story is true, whether it's actually true or not. But nonetheless, I think this should be taken seriously. I think that if I were in the Trump administration, if I were running this particular part of the federal government, if I were in that law enforcement part of the, the executive branch, I'd say, Mr. President, we need to launch an investigation. We need to look into the guy that allegedly made this woman drink toilet water, and we're not going to do it just as a PR stunt. We're going to actually look into this and see if border guards are actually mistreating illegal immigrants. And if they are, they need to be fired and or punished if they did any kind of criminal activity. I want that. I think that that's appropriate. I think that even though AOC is probably making this crap up, and I'm almost certain that an investigation is going to show that, on the very, very slight off chance that she's not making it up or she was just exaggerating, but there really is something to this undercurrent, that there really is some kind of evil element of the Border Patrol, I think we need to do an investigation just to make sure. And from the political perspective, I think that, that also winds up being a win for Donald Trump because if they ask any questions, you say, look, we launched an investigation. We were trying to be as impartial as possible. And if they find problems, they need to fix them. If they don't find problems, then they can say, see, we never had a problem to begin with. But either way, I do think that it needs to be looked into. I'm not saying you spend $35 million in two years worth of federal investigation to do it, but I don't think that a investigation done by a third party that's not the Border Patrol is out of order based on this allegation. I think that that's perfectly acceptable and frankly, I think that it's political capital that the president ought to be willing to spend. Because when it comes to this, when it comes to this issue, you need to be above reproach. Because I don't want people to suffer, illegal immigrant or not illegal immigrant. Even if you're in a prison right here in the state of Alabama, there's a reason that I'm an advocate for prison reform. You treat people humanely even if they break your laws. You treat people humanely and you make sure that you do things by the book so that nobody can say to somebody that does deserve to be in one of these facilities, oh, well, they're doing all these horrible things and, and that's a good excuse to shut them down. No, you need to do this fair. You need to do it by the book and you need to make sure that you are above all criticism because of that. So that if anybody says, no, this is just because so-and-so hates brown people and so-and-so doesn't want them in the country, you say, no. We followed the law. We did what we were supposed to do. We did our jobs. That's the best approach to this situation. Hey, y'all know I'm a stats and numbers guy, so here's some fun facts for you. People that subscribe to the Tactics YouTube channel are 200% more satisfied with their online video content and 400% more likely to be able to speak intelligently about politics and religion with somebody they know. Also, Four out of five people that subscribe to the Tactics YouTube channel live healthier, more fulfilling lives. And that fifth guy was just a social justice warrior with a stick up his butt. Also, 82% of the statistics on the internet, totally made up.